begin with your most powerful bioorganic complex, your mind. Your mind is your most powerful biological complex. Now, this would surprise a lot of people because most people would focus on the body. Most people would look at the biochemical processes that make up the human body. I am, of course, talking about respiration, circulation, digestion, neural networks, the human brain, the endocrine system, and so on and so forth. But the problem is, physical health can only go so far. Your mind plays a major role in the effectiveness of whatever biochemical compounds are applied to, introduced to, or imposed on your physical body. Let's put it this way. If you were playing basketball and you were taking a shot and you assume that the ball is not going to go in when you take a shot, chances are quite high that when you take a shot, a lot of them will not make it. Maybe the ball will bounce off the backboard. Maybe you won't even hit the rim. Maybe the ball will bounce off the rim. Whatever the case may be, since you assume that you suck at basketball and the ball is probably not going to go through the rim, it's going to have an impact on your physical actions. You're less confident. You're more likely to hesitate. Or you might just rush through the decision process when trying to determine how to make that shot. However it plays out, your belief system gets in the way of optimal action. The same applies to your mind. When you are not psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually there, and these parts of you are not meshing efficiently, don't be surprised if the chemicals that you are taking for depression and anxiety don't produce optimal results. Don't be surprised if you develop certain lifestyle diseases. Your mind keeps getting in the way. And this is why you have to understand how this bioorganic complex works. It is very complicated. There are many different parts to it, but by understanding how everything flows together, you can position yourself for more optimal physical health. Psychological wellness. When it comes to psychological wellness, one of the most common causes of problems involves our beliefs, in particular, beliefs that limit our capabilities. Maybe they limit your self-esteem. Maybe you're not all that sold on your ability to get things done. Maybe you feel that you're not all that worthy when it comes to the good things or the rewards of life. Whatever form this takes, your limiting beliefs have a cascading effect in many areas of your life. You're less confident, which leads to less competence, which leads to less rewards. Usually, real-world success turns on how competent you are. Can you get the job done right? Can you get it done quickly? Can you get it done at the right price? The world couldn't care less about what's going on in your mind. It definitely doesn't care about your feelings. All it cares about is whether you can produce the right results. In other words, it cares about actions. Unfortunately, if you have all sorts of limiting beliefs, you are less likely to take quality actions. In fact, you're more likely to look at the world as a very limiting and even hostile place. For optimal psychological wellness, you have to identify the mental script that you play every day. This is a personal narrative that you don't necessarily physically hear, but it still sends you signals every single day. Ask yourself, what kind of messages do you send to yourself? Do you constantly tell yourself you're ugly, you're unattractive, people aren't going to like you, and that whatever it is that you're trying to do is not going to work? When you find yourself in a situation, do you constantly say, this is going to suck? Do you assume that things are going to end badly before you even try? These come from a certain place. You have to track where this negative self-talk is coming from. If you're completely honest with yourself and you take a lot of time to do this properly, you would notice that they go back to certain beliefs that you hang on to for dear life. The problem is the more you cling on to these beliefs, the more they drag you down and hold you back. They're toxic. They make you feel unworthy. They give you the impression that you're smaller and weaker than you are. Maybe you're thinking that the best things in life are already taken by other people. Maybe you're thinking that when you give your heart fully, somehow, some way, it's only a matter of time until your heart is broken. Maybe you believe that the more you work towards something, the greater the disappointment. So why work so hard? There are just so many limiting beliefs out there. I'm just giving you some common examples. Still, they all go back to the same place. They make you feel smaller, weaker, and ultimately more fearful. If you keep rehashing these beliefs, they get stronger and stronger, and your ability to make things happen in your life becomes weaker and weaker. You get caught in corrosive thought patterns and mental habits that make you less and less effective you're more fearful. Alternatively, you may seem prideful, but really, blind, stubborn pride is really just a shorthand for fear of change. You need to let go of these. Identify what limits you because you're only as capable as you think. You may come off like a competent and confident person, but deep down inside, if you hang on to these limiting beliefs, nothing's going to happen. You're just playing a role. You're just fooling yourself. Let's face it. Ultimately, the only person that really knows is you. You know if you are playing a game with yourself, you know if you are just being a hypocrite. Emotional wellness. Once you have done some house cleaning regarding your limiting beliefs and corrosive thought patterns and mental habits, the next step involves your emotions. 
People who suffer from a less than optimal sense of wellness usually carry around a tremendous amount of emotional clutter. Do you work yourself up over stuff that really doesn't matter? Do you keep dwelling on stuff from the past that drains a tremendous amount of your emotional energy? Are you hanging on to stuff that just continues to burn you up or take up a lot of emotional resources? Usually, when people say the word hoarder, we think of a person who keeps all sorts of junk in their home. You probably have seen cable TV documentaries of hoarders. It's not pretty. They obsess about keeping all sorts of stuff they can't let go. So soon enough, one room fills up, then they fill up another room. And before they know it, they filled up their own house. It's definitely nasty. I'm sure it smells terrible, but they can't help it. They hang on for dear life to this stuff. Well, the same applies to emotions. You may be hanging on to certain memories. You feel that if you move on, that these negative memories might repeat themselves again. You might be played for a fool again. You might make the same mistakes again. Whatever reasons you give yourself, you hang on to these memories and these negative thoughts. The negative emotions that they produce clutter your mind. You feel like you can't help it. For example, if you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend in high school broke your heart, you can choose to constantly think about that person or certain memories regarding that person. As you live your life, when you come across something fairly random, it might trigger memories and the emotions keep coming back. This clutters your emotional state. It weighs you down. It's hard to move on. It would be nice if this was all benign like a tumor, but it actually spreads to other areas of your life. That heaviness that you feel drains emotional resources that you could have been using for better results. Maybe without this emotional clutter, you would be a more optimistic person. You may be more open to new experiences. You may be more likely to experiment or view life as some sort of adventure. Unfortunately, you keep hanging on to this emotional clutter and, worse yet, interpreting them in the worst way possible. It's like hanging on to poison. You think the more you hold it in your hand, the less likely you'll put it in your mouth. Little do you know it's seeping through your skin. It's definitely holding you back from grasping more productive things with your hand. At best, it's taking up space, which you could have used for more productive emotions. Spiritual wellness. Your sense of meaning and purpose is crucial. If you want to live a truly complete and meaningful life, you have to have a sense of why. You really do. You have to at least have an impression that your life is meant to go somewhere. There has to be some grand narrative tying everything together. Again, as I mentioned previously, this does not necessarily have to be classically religious in nature. You don't have to be a born-again Christian. You don't have to necessarily see Jesus or Allah or karma in every aspect of your life. Still, there has to be some sort of unifying sense of purpose. It must feel like a huge river that has a general direction. Unfortunately, as we get older and live our lives, it's very easy for us to turn a blind eye to spiritual pollutants. Spiritual pollutants involve internal beliefs that we come up with based on stuff that we observe. For example, if you keep hanging out at online forums where members make fun of each other and constantly tell each other to kill yourself, don't be surprised if your reading or interpretation of that corrodes your sense of hope. If you hang out with people who keep saying that life is pointless or you expose yourself to entertainment that gives you that same message, don't be too shocked if you feel that life is purposeless. You have to be very careful what you feed your mind because ultimately this can infect the central question of your life, which is why. Spiritual pollutants are everywhere. Even if you don't watch TV, you can be reading online articles, hanging out on forums, consuming certain social media content. The list is endless. Whatever form and shape they take, spiritual pollutants always try to corrode, degrade, or cheapen your sense of spiritual value. The moment you think that your life is purposeless by nature, then you know that your spirit has been polluted. If you feel that there's really no purpose or meaning to your life, then you have been absorbing spiritual pollution. Again, you don't necessarily have to believe in heaven or nirvana for this to be valid. The key here is that a sense of flow is missing. It seems like your life is just you spinning your wheels and going around pointlessly, each day the exact replica of the day that preceded it. Understand the impact of your mental habits. Make no mistake about it, if you don't have a laser focus on your psychological, emotional, and spiritual wellness, you're likely to pick up negative mental habits. When you detect certain things, for example, a friend that says he or she got a new job, it's very easy for you to become negative. It's very easy for you to assume the worst. The same applies to new relationships and new experiences. You may not be aware of it at first, but the more you entertain emotional clutter, limiting beliefs, and spiritual pollutants, it all becomes a thick, corrosive mental soup. This then sustains and nourishes negative mental habits. If you feel that you're always assuming the worst or if you feel that you are always envious and comparing yourself to other people and coming up short, it's because you have developed these mental habits. The good news is, just like with any other habit, you can break them. Seriously, 
The first step, of course, is to be aware that you have these habits. Mental, emotional, and spiritual dysfunctions. What's the big deal about having negative mental habits? What's the worst thing that can happen if you have limiting beliefs, suffer from emotional clutter, and surround yourself in a toxic sea of spiritual pollutants? Well, if that is your internal, psychological, emotional, and spiritual environment, don't be surprised if you feel depressed. That's right. Regardless of how much money you make, regardless of how much stuff you have, and regardless of how well-off people think you are, you can't help but feel sad. You can't help but feel that there's something missing in your life. Now, this is not just a simple case of personal disquiet. Depression can really sink into your bones. In fact, it doesn't matter how positive things are. You might win the lotto and get millions of dollars. It would still all feel pointless, sad, shallow, and empty. Depression is a real threat, and according to pharmaceutical industry figures, more and more people are getting antidepressant medication. This is called the Prozac effect. Now, a lot of this may be due to overprescription. This may be due to doctors just being too eager to prescribe antidepressants. But a large part of this is also reflective of the fact that people, by and large, have become disconnected. It's harder and harder for them to feel that sense of purpose. It's harder and harder for them to feel complete. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.